Waco ISD is home to four of the nation's top student historians who participated in National History Day events at College Park, Maryland. Hello everyone, I'm Robert Glensky, Social Studies Content Specialist for Waco ISD, and I'm here today at the Atlas Academy at Tennyson Middle School, and I'm joined by Harper Hoover. Harper just won first place in the junior division of the individual performance category. We are very proud of you, Harper. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I see that you have your first place medal there. Tell us a little bit about your topic. Um, the title of your topic is Dare to Explore, and it chronicles the history of the National Geographic magazine. Tell us a little bit about why you chose that topic and how it fit this year's theme. Well, I chose my topic because last year I did a photographer, um, her name was Dorothea Lang, and so I really became intrigued with the history of photography um, in relation to magazines and newspapers and um, things like that sort. And so I, I was trying to think of something that interested me this year, so I wanted to stay with the course of photography or magazines. And so I started to think of other magazines throughout history, um, for example, Life, I thought of that. Um, and in doing re research of some of these magazines, I found that a lot of them had to do with American culture and um, didn't really fit the theme as much as I wanted to. And so I did some more research of National Geographic and then finding that it was so international and ex explored many different um, parts of the world. And I knew it fit the theme explore, encounter, exchange, and history very well because of the diversity of different things that they do within the society. That's great. Now this is a process that began way back in the fall and, and it takes you through a, a whole lot of grueling research. Tell us a little bit about the research process and what you found to be most interesting. I began researching in about September is um, when I decided on my topic. And so I did a large chunk of my research in the fall between September and the school competition in December. And then um, as I would go to each next stage, I would increase my research and increase the information as well as um, improve my performance as much as possible. And I think what I found most interesting um, about my topic is how many things the society does and how well they do each thing. Um, and that I wasn't as aware that they do so much science, but also they talk a lot about history and they talk about the culture of people and how it's not necessarily, it's not geography um, and it's not just science and it's not just photography or history, but how they do a lot of different things and how the society has grown grown into this huge multimedia platform in this society who um, increases the knowledge of many different fields and many different topics to its readers. Tell you, Harper, you make the National Geographic magazine sound very exciting. How is it that you take all of that research and write the script and make it come alive in your performance? Well, the, the first thing you need to do um, when transferring your information to your performance is find what characters or what people um, would make the story most interesting. And so in my characters, I wanted to portray the very different sides of the society, um, the women that were obviously working in it and are working in it today, um, and also the women who kind of sat behind the sidelines, um, encouraging their husbands and um, contributing in ways other than writing and exploring um, and things like that. And so after I found the characters that I wanted to portray, I, um, I wrote down all the information that I wanted them to show and that I knew was important. And then um, I kind of sorted them into different categories of how I wanted to play them. Um, and that I didn't want them to be all the same and I didn't want them to sound exactly like me or anything like that. And so I did research on the characters and really just practiced and experimented with a lot of different ways of what they would do and how they would sound. As you tell the story, you, you share it through the eyes of three different characters. How did you choose those characters and what did you find interesting about each one? Well, my second character, Elsie Bell Grosvenor, um, I chose her because I wanted to have a section where I talked about the, um, the 
the many things that Gilbert Grosvenor and Alexander Graham Bell did for the society. And she was the daughter of Alexander Graham Bell and the wife of Gilbert Grosvenor. And so I was able to talk about those two important presidents and editors of the society um, and how they contributed so much. Um, and then Eliza, uh, who is my first character, I decided to play her because she was really the first woman um, that was innovative in the National Geographic Society um, and in her field and who really worked hard and didn't want to stay um, behind the curtain but was out there and was working and was traveling and was writing and she was really the first woman that kind of broke the barrier within the society of women can do just as much as men can. Um, and then my last character I decided because um, Susan Goldberg, who's the current editor of the magazine, uh, she's still fighting the barrier today of being the first woman editor-in-chief and one of the high ranks of the society and magazine, and that she shows how far we've come and, and that a woman can do just as much as a man can, whether it's in the society or outside of the society. And so choosing her um, was able to show the empowerment that she shows through the society and the many ways that she works. Now, have you been able to correspond with Ms. Goldberg in any way? Well, um, I've tried through three different links of trying to um, contact the editor. It's very hard to set up interviews, especially with people who are very important in today's time. And so unfortunately, um, every time I tried to email her um, or go through her through a different link, I was not able to talk to the editor. But I did get to talk to the um, National Geographic Archivist. So they're in charge of the photographs and the videos and the history of the society. And so I was able to talk to them about my topic. And I was actually able to make a visit to the National Geographic Archives in DC. And so I got to see the autochrome, the Kodachrome, the photographs and the films that they had. And so I was able to see the history right in front of my eyes through what they do best, photography. And so it was really amazing to be talking to these experts about what I've been working so hard on and see the history and the primary sources right in front of my eyes. So. That's terrific. That's terrific. Now, this is the second time you have advanced to national levels at National History Day in the performance category. Why is that the right medium for you? Well, um, I love doing performance in a lot of aspects. Um, I'm involved in musicals and plays um, throughout the city and in the district, of course. Um, and so it's what I feel most comfortable with. And I also feel like performance is kind of the most impactful category because while I love to look at the websites and read the papers and see the documentaries, it's very um, interesting and it's very impactful to feel like you're in the history yourself and that you're um, playing these women that have paved the way um, or you're talking about the historian or the, the people in history and you're, you, you do all this research, um, but it's very cool to see the notes on your page transform into actually being the people. Yeah. So. Yes. Now you have your medal there. And so um, the History Day event culminates with this grand ceremony where they hand out the awards. Kind of walk us through your emotions of leading up to your category and then how it felt when you heard them announce your name. Um, well, throughout the whole category, uh, or throughout the whole um, award ceremony, uh, I was very talkative because I get talkative when I get nervous. Um, and so I was just kind of sitting by my family and friends and, you know, trying to like breathe through everything. But really, it didn't like um, dawn on me of when my category was coming. And I remember when they said, now for junior individual performance, my entire family just took a like, <sighs> and we just sighed together. And so then um, they called out third place and they called out second place and um, they were such amazing projects that got second and third. And so I was getting very, very nervous and um, I was telling myself, you know, fourth place and fifth place, they're, they're very, very good, obviously, because it's, it's not just in the nation, it's like of the entire world um, because the competition is so universal. And so I was telling myself, you know, that's still way better than I did last year. And then they called my name and it was kind of just a moment of like, are you sure? <laughs> like I was very um, confused and then of course like startled. And then I was running down the steps and just so ecstatic of everything that was going on. It was a terrific moment. Well, 
We are very proud of you in Waco ISD. You have represented all of us extremely well on, on the regional, the state, and now the national level. We have a national champion among us, and we are so proud. Um, why don't we now cut to Harper Hoover in her performance, Dare to Explore. Dare to Explore, how the founding of the National Geographic Society changed the scientific community forever by Harper Hoover. The National Geographic Society has been organized to increase and diffuse geographic knowledge, and the publication of a magazine has been determined upon as one means of accomplishing these purposes. It will contain memoirs, essays, notes, correspondence, reviews, etc., relating to geographic matters. As it is not intended to be simply the organ of the society, its pages will be open to all persons interested in geography in the hope that it may become a channel of intercommunication, stimulate geographic investigation, and prove an acceptable medium for the publication of results. These words, the first ever words of the National Geographic magazine, remind me of how far our society has come in the last 10 years. Why, we've grown the diversity of our members, we've sent people to the mountaintops. And yet, I really must get started and finish up my article for the 10th anniversary special. Let's see, where was I? Oh, Reflecting on the National Geographic Society's first decade by Eliza Ruhama Skidmore, associate editor. The society was born in the age of innovation and revolution, paving the way for its destiny of modernization. Its mission was to share knowledge on the five different divisions of geography, the geography of land, water, air, life, and art. During the founding year, the society decided to expand its mission by publishing a journal. The first issue of the National Geographic magazine was nothing but a dull brown booklet full of countless words about geography. <laughs> Nonetheless, within a year, photography became a clear focus for the magazine, as the first photograph was published in 1889. What else is there to say? Oh, well, it was in 1890 when the Society funded its first major expedition. I believe it was one of the founding members, oh, Israel Russell, who led the expedition in the St. Elias region of Alaska. The team did not reach the summit of Mount St. Elias, but their journey was documented in the magazine, bringing adventure and the society's new tradition of exploration to the readers of our magazine. Our coverage of the Spanish-American War brought in many new members of our society. However, with new fans came new critics. Suddenly, the men told us we were going about our society all wrong, and the women claimed that we were being unjust to them. Yet, here I stand, a working woman, an associate editor, leading a group of men. 1897 brought new society president Alexander Graham Bell, who encouraged our reporters to become slowly more like storytellers. Why the pages had practically transformed from these wordy articles to now photographic collections, maps featured in the back cover, and hand-drawn illustrations. The National Geographic Society was no longer just old men scientists talking about geography, but now we are explorers, artists, storytellers. While we have made tremendous progress, I am confident that this is only the beginning. Oh, welcome ladies. Oh, do come in, do come in. I believe our tea should be out in any moment now. For all of you new members of the society, ladies, my name is Elsie Bell Grosvenor. I'm married to Gilbert Grosvenor, and of course my father is society president Alexander Graham Bell. Oh, I'm so delighted that we can get together in such a manner as this to visit and enjoy each other's company. You know, earlier in the week, I was rummaging around through our old attic when I found this box of society photographs. I thought you ladies might enjoy reminiscing with me over the last 20 or so years. Oh yes, the North Pole Expedition. I remember one of the first films the Society ever had was of Robert Perry leaving the ship port headed for the North Pole. Why, I was amazed and honestly a bit shocked when Perry reached the pole in 1909. He came back to America greeted with congratulations and applause. 
Well, that was until the controversy occurred between Cook and Perry. Frederick Cook claimed he had reached the North Pole first, and suddenly the society was up to its neck in scandal. Why, I remember it being in magazines everywhere. We may never know the true answer to this battle for many years to come, but even so, Perry explored undiscovered lands and gained the society much wanted attention. To me, it is still an outstanding accomplishment. Oh, do you ladies remember the Machu Picchu excavation? Why, that was so intriguing. I'd never seen anything so ancient and foreign. Why, when I saw these stone buildings and artifacts in the magazine, I felt like I was at the site myself. The society had certainly achieved its mission to bring the wonders of the world to anyone reading our magazine. Speaking of the magazine, it's been doing just as well over the past 20 years, hasn't it? Oh, you know, before Gilbert and I were married, he would always write me letters about his love for the magazine and how he had so many innovative plans for it. He wrote to me, I will change this magazine from one of cold geographic fact into a vehicle for carrying the living, breathing, human interest truth about this great world of ours. When he became editor in 1903, he began to incorporate many more photographs, such as this entire collection from Tibet. Why, our staff was astonished at his decisions, but our readers were amazed at these captivating photographs. In 1906, he published George Shree Ross's Nighttime Wildlife Photographs. The Society Board had earlier said that wildlife photographs were silly and a waste of our time. So when these were published, two of the members of our board resigned, claiming Gilbert was turning the magazine into a picture book. <sighs> With a divided society now turned against him, Gilbert continued to tell the world our stories. Why, our coverage of the Great War remained positive, and in 1914, we gained another first when we published A Flower Garden in Ghent, the magazine's first color photograph. Why, our circulation is now up to 713,000, and people are even beginning to call Gilbert the father of photojournalism. Why, I suppose my mother and I have married well. My family and I have certainly enjoyed seeing the many ways our society has explored new lands, encountered landmarks, and exchanged foreign cultures with civilizations around the world. However, I think I am more excited to see what we will do in the future. Now, you must excuse me for just a moment. I believe Gilbert's calling me. You know, he and Alexander have been talking about Alexander stepping down as the president. <gasps> Maybe Gilbert has claimed the position. Hello, and welcome to this very special celebration of the 128th anniversary of the National Geographic Society and Magazine. My name is Susan Goldberg, and as the first woman editor-in-chief of the magazine, I see firsthand every day how our staff continues the work of increasing and diffusing geographic knowledge as our founders put forth as their mission in 1888. After 128 years of dedicated hard work, service, and adventure, our legacy on the world is much more than what people see on the cover. As the National Geographic Society, we're constantly exploring. We've been exploring physically from the North Pole to the South Pole, from the highest mountain peaks to the lowest points in the sea. We're also exploring new ways to improve our technology, and we have become innovative in the technological world. Our scientists encounter and classify new species of organisms we make discoveries daily, and in doing such extraordinary work, it's the magazine's duty to share our findings with the world through storytelling. By using photographs, videos, television, and eloquent writing, we share what we see in the world with our audience. The magazine shows our encounters of life in the unknown. We tell the story of impoverished families in rainforests. We share with millions of our readers these scientific expeditions that only a few hundred scientists would be aware of without us. Our National Geographic reporters travel around the world exchanging their culture with the culture of the people they encounter. In the fields of journalism, photography, science, and technology, the mark of National Geographic is significantly present. The National Geographic Society has lived up to its mission, I believe. We've increased and infused the knowledge of geography in ways that the original 33 founders could not have foreseen. But we've done so much more than that. 
We've reached people worldwide with our ever wanting need to discover the truth about the world we live in. We will continue to discover the truth by exploring the world, encountering things we didn't know, and exchanging our findings with new foreign friends we've met on the way. The National Geographic Society will never stop encountering or exchanging, and we will always dare to explore.